Hi, this is Lyle Murphy, and I am the founder of the Alternative to Med Center, a place where we have helped people withdraw off of psychiatric medications for uh, 18 plus years now. And um, I've made some observations along the way that many of our listeners have find valuable to, you know, just my insight. So let's start with the first question. What is Depakote for? It is prescribed for seizures, especially in very young adults, even in you know, people that are um, considered infants, um, and also for helping control bipolar. Um, and I think we're probably going to get more into like what that means as far as bipolar, um, but uh, I, as someone who works with someone's mental health, I'm generally going to answer questions about Depakote based upon its mental effects rather than a person with a seizure disorder. So if you're expecting these answers to be applicable to you if you have a seizure disorder, I would caution you to um, rethink that because um, for the people coming off Depakote that are doing it for a mental health reason, the consequences are not generally that, in the realm of consequences, are not generally that severe. However, if you have a seizure disorder, they can be life-threatening. So. Find another guide for you uh, other than this particular video if you're having a seizure disorder. All right. Next question. What is the generic name for Depakote? Um, it's divalprex uh, sodium. Um, it's also called valproic acid. Um, yeah. The next question is, is Depakote an antipsychotic? No, it's not classified as an antipsychotic. Um, as a standalone, can it bring you out of psychosis? Potentially, yes. And it's often prescribed along with an antipsychotic to give it that extra, you know, um, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the major flood in the dam might be here, right? But there's another crack over here. So it's like, we're going to seal up this crack with an antipsychotic and we're going to seal up this crack with a Depakote, right? So they typically prescribe it along with a, um, with an antipsychotic. Because an antipsychotic is going to block your dopamine, it's going to block this excitatory neurotransmitter that it usually presents itself with psychosis, but Depakote is also, in, in like one of them's decreasing excited neurotransmitter, and Depakote's actually increasing an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it makes sense from a prescribing sense to prescribe them together because you're actually doing the same thing from different parts of the nervous system. You're, increasing an inhibitory response and you're decreasing a stimulatory response so that you're fixing the teeter-totter in this direction where it was flying out of control in this direction, if that makes sense. So it's, it's like a whew. It's like you, if your throat is going off the car to the left, you're whew, taking it fully over to the right. Um, uh, next question, what is Depakote used for in uh, mental illness? Um, they Again, they prescribe it as an adjunct to someone that's had psychosis, but um, if you're creating a diagnosis, you're a prescriber, you're creating a diagnosis that Depakote fits, it probably would be in the bipolar, you know, one or two category that you would actually prescribe that medication for someone and not have it in conjunction with another medication. Next question, what are the side effects of Depakote? It gonna make you sleepy, <laughs> it's gonna make you, you know, you're gonna, your digestion's gonna be messed up, you may be lethargic, you may, um, it's meant to slow you down, so you're gonna feel slowed down in your sexual expression and your, and your, um, but you're gonna probably wanna eat more at some point, it's gonna actually make your digestion, you know, if you're gonna be, have more hunger and appetite and things, but it might make you nauseous in the first place, but then you overcome that, and you probably wanna eat more, uh, next question. How long do the effects of Depakote withdrawal last? Usually not that long. It depends on who you are. If you're withdrawing from a medication and what you're calling withdrawal effects are continuing into the, um, into the protracted area, what they call protracted withdrawal, there's a strong chance it's not actually because of the medication you're feeling that. You may have accumulated neurotoxins in your nervous system that are affecting your nervous system in a very profound way that that medication is no longer um, buffering you from and it's kind of like you took a glove off and you're still getting a fastball pitched at your hand I mean it is hurting because of how thick the glove was right but the, the pitcher is still pitching a ball that's too fast to catch you know what I mean it's, it's like there's another angle to this to the way the nervous system is working and some people think that oh you know if I just 
don't do the medication and I hold out long enough, I'll, I don't know, build up calluses in your hand or something that's going to catch a 100 mile an hour fastball. That's generally not a good way to go about it. The, you got to get the pitcher to pitch a slower ball. So if you're going into protracted withdrawal, you might want to think about neurotoxicity. But back to the question about Depakote, it, uh, how long the withdrawal sy symptoms last is an attribute of its half-life. And it, depending on whether it's immediate release or extended release, you're looking at somewhere between 16 hours for uh, immediate release is the half-life and 40 hours for the extended release. So that's how long it stays in your system. The question actually was, how long does the withdrawal last? So the withdrawal is usually going to be about when the half-life is. So the half-life of the immediate release is going to be 12 to 16 hours. The extended release is going to be 40-ish hours. Uh, mostly people have prescribed the extended release, so about 40 hours is going to be the crescendo of whatever you're going to feel with withdrawal. So usually about three days uh, to five days is your kind of your withdrawal window, and hopefully they restabilize by seven days. Uh, next question, what can help relieve Depakote withdrawal symptoms? Okay, so Depakote is, is like um, GABA, right? You're basically making GABA a naturally occurring neurotransmitter, uh, either more effective by expressing it more or increasing the amount. In this case, it's helping with the permeability and the expression of GABA. It's kind of like stepping on the accelerator that uses up gas, but you're actually stepping on the brake that's using up brake fluid, if that makes sense. You'll eventually run out of the brake fluid you know, because you're, this is how the system works, if you're not putting brake fluid back into it. So, to relieve the withdrawal symptoms, you want to put the brake fluid back into the, to the what do they call it, master cylinder. Um, and ways to do that is you start taking GABA in, at the same time you're withdrawing. You take GABA at the same time it's running, so you're lifting up your GABA while you're taking away a drug that was um, um, accentuating the effect of GABA, naturally occurring GABA supplement, um, and um, for some people, that might actually be taking gabapentin. To, to just to, depending on how severe of withdrawal they're having off of Depakote, maybe they take gabapentin and then they get off of gabapentin. They use gabapentin as a bridge medication. But also, um, another way you can help mitigate this from a very uh, what do they call it? Gross standpoint, where it's not very um, granular. It's it's big bouldery like perspective. Like you. The most stimulatory neurotransmitter of your nervous system is going to be glutamate, right? So if you're coming off something that was directly blocking glutamate, which is what GABA does, right? You've got the strong neurotransmitter that's glutamate. It's pushing excitatory down your nervous system. And the safety valve for that is GABA that makes you not have depolarization in that nerve. I know I'm losing a few people, but basically, um, you want to increase the GABA so that you're not having... Um, the symptoms, and you want to decrease the glutamate so you're not having symptoms. So you don't want to be eating your wife's Korean food with MSG or whatever. You know, you want to eliminate glutamate-containing foods. Uh, look up on the internet, please, what those, those are. I'm not going to spend the time to go through all of the glutamate-containing foods, but reduce the amount of glutamate-containing foods in your diet, um, and, you know, stay away from other things that might have stimulatory things in it, like Aspartame. Yeah, glutamate containing foods, eliminating that from your diet is going to help. And um, next question How do you taper or wean off Depakote? Okay. Uh, like from a numerological standpoint, uh, Depakote is prescribed at very high doses, right? So it can be like 2,000 milligrams. And if you're 2,000 milligrams, you can usually be more adventurous on the higher end than you are with the lower end on a taper, right? So you you, you know, you can fly down the stairs like this, but then you hit the ground and you got to, you know, so you go to 2,000, 1, 1,500, 1,500, you know, you drop 500 all the long, and then you go from 500 to 250, you know, you, you just take that last one and that little half step. That's probably the preferred way. Um, next question, how long does Depakote stay in your system? We already went through that question um, as it relates to the half-life. It stays in your system for a while, but if you're on the extended release, it's 40 hours is the half-life, and then there's a mathematical logarithm for how long it would stay in your system in total after that, but um, generally when people say how long does it stay in your system, they're talking about when is it going to stop affecting you, and usually it's about day three to day five, you're going to get enough of that washed out, we're going to see what life is like without that. 
but you're also going to have to know, adapt to what life is like without that. So um, that could take weeks. That could take you know a lot more than whatever the half life of the drug is. And last question: How do you stop taking Depakote? Um, just throw it out the window while you're driving down the freeway. I'm kidding. No. So uh, we went through that. It depends on how much Depakote you're on and what you're taking it for. If you're taking it for a seizure, please don't follow my advice. I'm not even wanting to. I don't even. I mean, I, I could. Help a patient like that if they're a patient with me and we were talking about it, but the, that, the topic of this conversation is you've had it prescribed to you for a mental health problem, you're going to come off it because of a mental health problem, and you, you just do it as pragmatically as ever. You know, if you're on 2,000, go to 1,500. If you're on 1,500, go to 1,000. If you're on, you know, 1,000 uh, and you've been on 1,000 for quite a while, then maybe you break that up into four. You go 1,000, 750. 500, 250, but um, not a lot of people have big problems with this particular medication, but there's some that do, and you know that you're one of those people, then go slower. If you seem to be able to handle that first cut, and it went well, then keep going with something similar. And um, that should do it for Depakote. And again, don't change your medications based upon something you've heard here. Uh, adding supplements could affect how your medications work. Please be mindful of that and ask um, for being under the care of someone that can run those things by you as you're experiencing you know, a new supplement. And other than that, have a good day or a good evening, whatever it might be for you. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For information about Alternative to Med Center, give us a call at 888-984-9667.